This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for watching. And of course, we're ready to analyze the biggest entertainment stories. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I have just Ife Uluwa Oshoke with me what's today. What's good? What's good? What's good? How are you doing? Right. Ife, what's up? Ife, Ife. Okay, let me just move on because no, I know you both, you both have. Myself. Oh, to yourself. Yeah. I thought it was the Ife on mine because I don't, I don't understand the, no, no, she the had bond to... you both have, but it's okay. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Academy Awards recently opened entries to um, the best films released globally and the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee, NOSC, has announced a call for feature film entries by Nollywood filmmakers into the 93rd Academy Awards. Mm. The committee's chairperson, Chineze Anyene, said, and I quote, we were able to make our first ever entry submission to the Oscar for the International Feature Film Awards category as a country. Of course, that was last year. And um, the awareness this has brought to the industry as a whole has been amazing. It has opened the industry to other markets, and we hope to see partnerships with other industries soon. End of quote. The event is slated to hold on the 25th of April, 2021. Mm. Yeah, I like this. I like this. I like the inclusion of Africans and the African industry into the international space. That is, it's not just. I'm not even speaking for just Nigeria right now. I'm speaking about Africa as a continent as a whole. That people are beginning to see the amount of work and talents that we have in this part of the world, and they're beginning to appreciate us. So, you know, in almost every award, there is. Um, a category for us to be featured one way or the other and I think that is progress regardless of some people may not be content but I can remember when we had Joey Akin on this table and then we're talking about the Grammys and then people saying that they want Afro Beat Awards specially blah 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 and it was like this is an American or they don't owe you anything the fact that they're putting you there is because they see an effort in what you're doing so I think this is just one of those times when we just have to be grateful that Yes, we begin to get it. And then I don't know what's holding people back from sending out their entries already because um, I don't even think they needed to make this call, like start sending entries. Of course, they need to make the call. If not, you won't be able to send any entry anywhere. Who's going to receive it? Mm. But for me, I mean, I, I just feel like people are not following, to, actually. Of course, people are following those who are interested. But mm. this takes me back to. Um, when the Genevieve and Nadi conversation started mm. regarding her movies that was put in for, um, mm. um, um, what's it called, the Oscars now, mm. and um, she didn't get it. And a lot of conversations started regarding King of Boys, regarding other movies that people thought could have clinched the award. Mm. I mean, it could have, not even the award, the, the nomination. You know, hers was a disqual disqualification case or something. So um, the conversation then was regarding how publicized the, and uh, when it was time um, to get the entries, how publicized was that? how many people heard about it, um, the mainstream media didn't hmm. know anything about it, you know, that conversation came up um, quite a lot, and I'm glad that the NOSC um, heard that, and I think they are partnering with media platforms right now to push out the message, and anybody that doesn't hear about this right now just didn't pay attention, oh, no, it's not or just you probably interested. don't have anything to put out there, you mm. know, that is um, Oscar standard, so this is an opportunity for everyone to um, send in what they think um, meets the standard because of course that conversation helped us understand the criteria as well regarding um, indigenous language and what they expect the percentage um, the translation and all that so we have even if you're not in that space we have a fair idea mm. of what it is and this I'm going to use this opportunity to probably call on those who will be wanting to send in their entry. I mean, you know the criteria. If you don't meet that criteria, kindly do not bother sending it so that these people can have enough time and space to go through other movies that ha have got that um, 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 whatever it is they're looking for and be able to make the right decision for us right now because this is about us as Nigerians, not just about the filmmakers or just about Nollywood or the people on NOSC. So let's just do the right thing at the right time. And I'm hoping um, that we can trust their judgments um, to pick the right movie this time around to mm -hmm. at least clinch that nomination for I mean that that would be it yeah? yeah I mean we hope for that so 
Good luck to everyone looking out to that. And it's also worthy to mention that this is the first and only one that they are going to consider movies that didn't get to the cinema because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, but you yeah. had to have been stated to be yeah, in you the have, cinemas. You, you, you should like, have had the plan. I, li I like yeah. that as well because um, it's it, you can't lose on both hands. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of people that put out a lot of money for their movies to get to the cinema. But because of the COVID-19 the pandemic, pandemic yeah. they, the, the movies never saw the light the of cinema, day of yeah. the cinemas. And um, I just... But they must have streamed on a reputable commercial platform. streaming platform. So I just think yeah. that is good because you, you can't put in all the work and then because of a pandemic, we know how difficult those times are, but at least, you know, when you still consider people knowing that it is a pandemic, mm. it's nobody's fault, but your work is still being appreciated. Yeah, so kudos and we'll be watching the space closely to know um, what Nigerian movie will be sent in. Now moving on to the next story, John Boyega is not happy about the direction of black characters at Disney Beyond Marketing. In a new interview with GQ magazine, he criticized bosses at Disney for marketing the presence of a black character in the movies, but failing to bring the characters to a satisfying conclusion. He said, and I quote, you get yourself involved in projects and you're not necessarily going to like everything. What I would say to Disney is do not bring out a black character, market them to be much more important in the franchise than they are, and then have them push to the side. It is not good. I'll say it straight up end of quotes and all this is based on the rise of skywalker which concludes a trilogy of star wars films that began in 2015. Hmm. this is a classic case of use and dump <laughs> because <laughs> at the end of the day they make these guys feel like oh you're very important to mm. these um, movies you know like your roles your characters are very important and then at the end of the day due to racial um differences they put push them to the sideline and then they project the people that they actually had plans to project from the mm. onset. But because of what we've always said about the movie industry and especially the white dominated industries mm -hmm. where they are trying, everybody's trying to be politically correct now. So you see this balance, like even if it's a movie that I feel like all white people can do, there has to be an inclusion of a black guy somewhere. And a gay guy. Or a gay guy, mm -hmm. you get. So I think it's, it all still boils down to that politics that they feel, the gimmicks that they feel we do not know about. But deep inside, we know that, yeah, we know what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is just one of those things. But mm -hmm. in this case, mm -hmm. they try to include them. But if you can remember, there was a backlash when John Boyega was the one who got the role for... Star Wars, that and like, mm -hmm. why would you get put a black guy in it? You know, back and forth, back and forth. So, is it that they are beginning to listen to what the fans are saying? Like, no, a black uh, guy didn't fit in, or what exactly is mm -hmm. going on? Or is it just one of those gimmicks they just put the true black man in? And I don't want to completely think it's a gimmick or believe it's a gimmick because, um, I mean, I would love for other people in the industry mm. to come out to say one or two mm. things before I can conclude. I think he called right. all that black people that were No, that he just called the, the guy movie. that is also in the same movie. Who is no, the Asian? Uh, no, just two people. Just him and one Kelly guy. I can't remember his name properly right now. Those are two people. Him and that other person, apparently. Anyway, um, but then it could also be just a creative blunder like a creative what if they also had an idea or maybe as time goes on there will be an idea to develop their own character to something else i mean mm. when it comes to he sequels. Uh, superheroes and sequels and all these um, powers we know what happens i mean mm. we we saw what happened with black panther black panther was never the focus on the we saw a black panther yes yeah, so um i i think i think I, I don't America. want to jump into conclusion mm. it it could also be that he's just in his feelings i mean you cannot rule that away and he just feels like so because my character was not developed and since i'm black i feel like i'm being oppressed but it could just be that your character wasn't there was no plan to really develop it at this time or even later or now they can now decide to develop it later i mean there's a lot of what if what if not when it comes I mean, to creativity and writing the because of what you, you know there are characters you see in a series they start in the beginning they are not really relevant and then at the third season or fourth season you realize that the story now begins to revolve around a certain character and you're wondering 
how did that happen? You know, there are a lot of things can happen when it comes to creativity and writing for a movie. I, I don't want to believe that this is Disney's plan to say, okay, we are going to market to these people because they want to be included and the blacks and, are yearning for something. Mm. And then once we get the market, we then throw it aside. Nah, I don't and think And off that's the back the of what you just said, yeah. I think it's also, I am beginning to see a lot of sense in what you said because we like to play the victim card mm -hmm. like so much. Like everything is because I'm black. It's because yeah. I'm black. It's not always because you're black. Sometimes it's just because, okay, that character needs to come to an end. You're not the creative director. You're not the person in charge. You're not the one. You're not the um, producer. There are other people that called you to be mm. screened for this certain movie. They have something that backs it up. They have their dreams, yeah. you understand? Mm -hmm. And they know the direction in which they want their movie to go. So I think sometimes, like you said, we shouldn't be all up in our feelings and stop playing the racial card all the time. Tea Time continues right after the short break. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I decide that every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Right now? <laughs> oh, yeah. Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die. Everybody feeling alright. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. Like God DM sometimes from Malawi. Like woo. <laughs> Welcome back. This is your tea time on Plus TV Africa. Now, Dwayne Johnson reveals he and his family test positive to COVID-19 and it's been challenging. Advising people to stay disciplined, boost their immune system, commit to wellness and wear your face masks. My wife Lauren, as well as my two baby girls and myself, we have all tested positive for COVID-19. And I could tell you that this has been one of the most challenging and difficult things we have ever had to endure as a family. And, um, and for me personally too as well. And, and and I've gone through some doozies in the past. I've gotten knocked about and got my ass kicked a little bit in the past with some challenges, but but testing positive for COVID-19 um, is much different than overcoming nasty injuries or, 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 or being evicted or even being broke, which I have been uh, more than a few times. Um, and the reason why I feel like this is different is, is because my number one priority is to always protect my family and protect my children, my loved ones. By the way, I know I speak for all of you guys. It is our number one priority. All of you guys around the world, you always want to protect your family and your babies. Um, so, and I wish it was only me who tested positive, um, but it wasn't, it was my entire family. So this one was a real kick in the gut. But I am happy to tell you guys that we as a family are good. We are on the other end of it. We're on the other side, we are no longer contagious, and we are, thank God, we are healthy. And we've gotten through COVID-19 stronger and healthier. And, you know, believe me, I am counting my blessings because like all of us, we all uh, have, we all have been hit by this thing, um, whether it is people we know, family we know, loved ones we know, friends we know. Um, so we are counting our blessings right now because we're well aware that it isn't always the case that you get on the other end of uh, COVID-19 stronger and healthier. Um, I have had some of my best friends have lost their parents, their loved ones uh, to this virus that has that is so incredibly relentless and unforgiving and it is insidious. We are counting our blessings, um, but we are good. And, you know, I, I gotta tell you, you know, some of the silver linings out of this, and I'm always trying to look for silver linings when challenges come my way is um, generally uh, babies and little children um, can often have little to no symptoms at all. So for our babies, Jazzy and Tia, it was, um, they had a little sore throat uh, the first couple of days, but other than that, they bounced back and 
and they, uh, it, it's been life as normal. Uh, happy babies running around and playing, uh, but we have isolated ourselves as a family. It's what we had to do. But Lauren and I, it was a little bit different uh, for Lauren and I. We, we had a rough go, but we got through it. And again, we got through it as a family. We are stronger, we are better, and we did it together. We picked up COVID-19 from very close family friends. And then someone would ask that, why, I, why is it that when um, Nigerian celebrities come out to speak about their COVID-19, we don't take them like... seriously? Do you see how this guy gave us detail for the Thank world? You. Like, he gave us every, he, he broke it down. He told you some of the challenges he faced. He told you some of the things he faced mentally, emotionally, mm. as a father. I think you know? they also face peculiar to their own family, um, not playing to the gallery. Do you understand? Like, he gave you everything. So there's, how, how on earth would I look at this and be like, if, if, it's, if it's not true, then it's great acting, Oscar, Oscar deserving, actually. Do you understand? Because I just feel like that's the same thing that Nigerians need to take a toll from or take a cue from and learn from that. When you need to speak about things that affect people worldwide, you need to show more emotions, you need to give more information and don't be holding back on certain things. So I appreciate the way he came out to talk about it and the advice that he gave to everyone out there about how to keep safe, how there are different um, um, peculiarities to certain people that have mm -hmm. the virus and all that. So it's amazing and I just want that and I hope this just serves as a point of contact to everyone who still feels like there's no COVID-19. It, it is still there. People are still getting it. Is it still as rampant as it was? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Is it still as scary as it was? Maybe not because yes, I can remember the still pandemonium. Yeah, it is still so. dangerous but you know, the fear, the mm. fear at the beginning. Now we know we're beginning to make progress one way or another. Mm -hmm. You know it is not a death sentence anymore. You know back then we used to think like once you have it, you're going to die for sure. But right now I think people are beginning to get more educated. People are beginning to get more aware. Mm. But are we still keeping safe? I do not think so, which is why I like the fact that he said wear your mask. He still told you the things to do to still get out of this. So it's amazing and um, big shout out to the Johnson families, and um, I'm glad they're safe and healthy now. Yeah, I'm definitely glad they're safe, and um, so he says they're in a good place now, health-wise, so I'm glad. I mean, the place that got me laughing was when he said he was, he's been broke as well sometime, yeah. More but I just times. want to reiterate what he has said, which is boost <clears throat> your immune system. I, mm. I've said that over and over again. If you felt my was on this table, she would definitely laugh. Boost your immune system. Wear your face masks, live a healthy life, like do everything possible to ensure that your immune system is on a top mm. notch. Now, that includes eating healthy, of course, your vegetables, your um, um, fruits and all that. And also, I mean, one thing, yeah, one thing they also say is when they ask you to eat healthy, this is expensive. I don't think it's as expensive as people make it out to mm -hmm. be. It is when you want to eat the food of 10 people at the same time. That is when it becomes expensive. And I don't think that's a healthy lifestyle mm. anyway. Way. So I think we should actually take a step back, think of what we are eating. Are you just eating rice and loading rice and then at the end of the day you eat one small piece of you meat? You can even load eating. rice, but how do you mix up your rice? Do you mix up your rice so with So I, I think we should, all? I mean, immune boosters, vitamin C, um, um, what's this thing, what's they call the... Um, Oh, the su supplements, yeah. Mm. Take a lot of supplements and just be ready. Wash your hands, wear your face masks, and be ready to fight it when it comes. That's if it comes. I'm just saying, yeah. So that's basically it for me. And of course, I'm happy for his family. Like he said, people have lost loved ones. So it's mm. something that we need to be very sensitive about. And I like that you also touched about the difference between how the celebrities come out over there, talk about their own case when they encounter COVID-19 and how our own here, it feels like, mm, I just want to make the news anyway. So there is a huge difference. So forgive us when we probably don't believe you, yeah? And I mean, moving moving on, um, you also talked about it um, not being as rampant anymore. But you know the dangerousness, if there's a word like that, of this disease has to do with whatever it meets in your own system. Mm. So it could, I could have the disease and um, I get better, maybe mm. I have a good immune system. And the next person who we thought is actually okay and has, has a good um, health, um, health care or health system might not be able to survive it. And mm. it, it, the person could get it based on my own carelessness. Mm -hmm. So because of that reason, because of the fact that how this, you can't predict how this virus is going to react in somebody else's body is why sure. we still need to be very careful. And that is why it's still very dangerous to me as a person. So um, I just... To all of us. I really hope we get to that point where we can say COVID-19 is gone. And 
I know it will happen. That's a I know it will happen. Question. I mean, we beat wild polio, so yeah, we'll do this one. Yeah? Ebola is still there. Okay, I think that's how we wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching and please send your opinions via WhatsApp to 0906057019 or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. My thank you as always go to my co-anchor Ife Oluwa Shunkeye. And yeah. of course, you can watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. My name is Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.